Hello and welcome. I am Gary and Reaver and these are my first impressions of Gibbous A Cthulhu Adventure. I found this on Steam while I was just browsing and it was something that I knew I had to play after how much I loved the Miskatonic. Where the Miskatonic is a visual novel, this one is a sort of retro style point and click, I think and I got a free key of this from Keymailer. If you want to have your say on future first impressions, please consider pledging to my Patreon linked in the description. Also, if you have suggestions for other games I could play, put them in the comments and I will take a look. Hello. A storm. Hmm. That's the least of my worries. Can't say I love the art style. Change. Everything's changing. It's got a, a certain aesthetic to it, but not... The only thing you can know is whatever it's tossed at you won't make any kind of sense but up against the last thing. What? It's the change, you see. I've been hired to locate some kind of ancient book. It's supposed to have inside of it the kind of stuff makes the Joe's guts turn salt and sallow. Which I guess explains the weirdo cults popping up all over Darkham. Darkham, great name. Cash is cash, though, and I could really use the milk. That something doesn't change. <laughs> Prologue. It's, a, it's an adorable cat. Well, here it is. Miskatonic Library. Not the, uh, friendliest place in town. And this town and friendly ain't even in the same zip code. In case you hadn't guessed, uh, Miskatonic is a theme and thing that's, like, common to all Cthulhu Mythos stuff. So, this has something a bit like Deponia in that you can hold space and it shows you things you can interact with, which is really, really good. Have a look at that. Darkum, Horrible hellhole. My gut instinct was telling me I could look at everything a second time. Glean extra information <laughs> that might be useful. Or not. Okay, so I guess I better look at it again. The brooding, festering horror of the ancient town. Weird, that just popped into my head from... Nowhere. It's probably a quote from one of the, the stories. I see you. Never ah, I see. <sighs> so when there's no more to learn, the eye closes or closes a bit more. That's a good idea. No. I gotta investigate the library first. More Darkham. Oh, like Arkham. Wow. Not nearly as badly lit as the name would suggest, but more than compensating on the creepy scale. Vine-coloured gargoyle? Looks like some kind of gargoyle. Swallowed almost whole by those dead vines. That's a Cthulhu statue. <laughs> it's just creepy as hell. No kind of lip syncing, but that's, I suppose, to be expected. There's tiny graffiti on it. Stay in school. I guess it's an advice column. Lol. Because that's something you get in modern magazines and newspapers? I don't know. Into the library. Hello, librarian. One thing that I recall from the Steam page is that there are three playable characters. I'm guessing, based on art, that they are him, him, and maybe a cat. There's a thing of strange medallion of Cthulhu there. Strange bass relief, study area, dusty intriguing book, librarian. Let's go around. Rows and rows of mouldy old books. That's where folks get strange, ancient diseases by flipping the wrong pages with their bare fingers. Mm. Wear protection. Goes for libraries, too. <laughs> the voice had to laugh during that line. I think this is a... Uh, I don't know if it's, like, crowdfunded, but, like, during the intro cinematic, which I didn't record, it was, like, before I got to the main menu, it was just, like, a load of cults. It's the people who hired him. One of the... A cultist had such drastically different audio quality. Our men! And women! I'm fairly sure they were just like an amateur contributing to the project. Strange bass relief. They really went out of their way to make this place as creepy as possible. Uh. I'll bet the common Joe doesn't even know what a bass relief is. I'd wonder exactly what that bass needs relief from. The oppressive, stagnant wow. atmosphere of Darkham. A trudging, boring life stuck in a library interior? An uncertain future in the face of an uncaring populace? The ridiculousness of this fish pun? What? I don't know. No one can be sturgeon. 
Ah, who gives a carp? I think a better joke would have been, by the way, a bass relief is, and then like give the dictionary definition of that instead of going off on a rambly thing. It's the popular book section. Apparently, all Daniel Maroon novels, you know, Vatican mysteries and all that. Oh, I see, like Dan Brown. LOL! Daniel Maroon's Gibbous Gospel. <gasps> like the game! Hi. Evening. Good evening, sir. How's things in the library business? Interesting library, is it old? My name's Katype. Don Katype. Here to see about a book. How things? So, how's things in the library business? Uh, you know, can't complain. It's a living. Interesting library you got here. Is it old? Yeah, pretty old. It's old, huh? How old? The terrible lip syncing is really, bothering really me. Old. You might even say it's it's ancient. It was established by one Jeremiah Orne in uh let's see, uh, eighteen a really, really long time ago. Huh. Thanks for the info. Sure. That felt overwritten. The name's Katype. Don Archetype. Wow. A book. Well, you uh, come to the right place. Getting bad vibes. Wait, you're talking about the real Necronomicon, aren't you? Yeah, no, sorry, that doesn't actually exist. We don't really carry that kind of stuff here. Chances are, it's nothing but a myth, Mr. Katype. I can't believe his name is Don Archetype. Because it's, it's a very um, Terry Pratchett name. I don't like when a character's name is, is a joke or a pun on its, of itself. So the biggest example I can think of in Terry Pratchett's work is Moist. Moist von Lipwig. Because his jo his name being Moist is just... It undermines his... To me, personally, it undermines his value as a character. So I'm just, I'm just rambling now. Definitely our most popular in existent book. Who else has been interested in it? Everyone, from excitable teenagers to these freaky cultist types that seem to crop up everywhere in the last few months. Tell me about these cultists. What can you tell me about these cultists? They come in all shapes and sizes. Mm, folks on him? Young to be a librarian. Look, I can tell you come from a different era, but between you and me, that's straight up ageist. Wow. Oh, really? And that uh, different era business ain't? <laughs> Touche, Mr. Katype. I hate his name. It. Mind if I uh, snoop around your collections a little while? You'd have to talk to Mr. Orne about the rare books department, though. Uh, at the moment, he's really busy with some new arrivals upstairs, so you'd have to wait a while. I didn't catch your name, Mr. Kerwin. Buzz Kerwin. That's an interesting surname and an accent that I can't quite place. Says Mr. Yeah. Katype. The animation seems very. Discworld 2? Which is odd, as that's like, God, 20, 20 plus years old? Don's Diary. Sources hint of the Necronomicon hiding in plain sight inside the Miskatonic Library. How plain that sight is remains to be seen. Gotta look into it ASAP. Thing on the doorstep. Um, Yes, crawl my fingers, stroke it lovingly. No, I'll just look at it for now. There's a thing on the doorstep there. Looks like a package. I suppose libraries do have doorsteps. Not really something I ever considered them to have. Go on, stroke it lovingly. Purple box. Yay. Stroke the it's package. The that came out wrong. <laughs> Put your lips up against this man. This is coming increasingly wrong. Found this thing on the doorstep. Were you expecting a package? No, not really. Let's see it. There's a note here. Oh, it's for you. Too long have you meddled in our business katype. Wow. Here's your chance at a bright future for a change. <laughs> is it me or is this thing ticking? I only said, is it a bomb? <laughs> wow. Mr. Katype! Stupid bloody name. Just leave the fire burning in the it's library. Gone. No, Fire. Mr. Horn, sir. Someone set up a bomb in here. I, I was about to call the police. Fire. Captain, you call this a bomb? You should have seen Dresden, son. Okay, I'm just going to stand here calmly. Looking kind of weird. Do I have an inventory? I do not. Alright, well, 
strange medallion. Oh, I forgot to look at the strange medallion before. But first, I will steal the book. It's nope, Mr. that's a shoe. shoe. Well, I feel like I should call him Don now that we've been through this together. It's Don's shoe. <laughs> Why does that feel like that's also a pun? I should bury it. Or stroke it lovingly. Whichever works. Strange medallion. Well, at least that thing took some damage. I think it's a little loose now. There's a weird glow emanating from behind it. What the? What do you mean, at least that thing took damage? Well, when the bomb went off, at least the library got damaged. It's sure to fall off and kill someone whenever the next earthquake hits. The building is still currently shaking. I'd knock it off, for sure, but I can't reach that. Oh, I have to throw the shoe at it, right. I have to throw Don's shoe at it. I just realized how long I've actually wanted to do this. Don sends his regards, ugly. Wow. Almost clearly the Necronomicon. And it's alive. Is that the cat? I hope that's the cat. Is, is this what Dawn was after? You're coming with me, weird book. It has an eye. I. I never Grimoire thought I'd grabber. actually say this, but the Necronomicon feels weird in my pants. Wow! Oh boy, what an evening. <laughs> think, Buzz, think. Dawn's been kidnapped. The police are a bunch of corrupt and incompetent tools. What do I do? Maybe well, put out the fire? One can close up for the night. Things are way too messed up to stick around. Yeah, because the they're on fire. Retreat to the bus cave, clear my head, wow. and see what this strange book is all about. No one seems to be acting like a person, and that might be the point. Oh no, there's the cat. Uh, okay, safely. Does home. the the book possess the what? cat? What the hell was all that about? Am I really? Talking out loud to myself? Mm. Kitty, should I open this thing and see what's written in it? What do you say? Uh, you're a lot of help. You did give him chance. Yeah. That's how you go insane. Yeah. Kashaptuzi Dinger Kampa Per Adonai Methatron. Um. Well, something that's going to possess the cat. The? This is genuinely becoming really scary now, and I'm all alone. What do I do, Kitty? God, I wish you could talk back for once. Oh, I see. And the cat was imbued with occult power. And I'm guessing he's going to be sarcastic. He just feels like he's going to be a sarcastic cat. Sarcastic. Shush. Something feels very different now. As much as I hate agreeing with you, something what? does feel very different now. I know, was right? not expecting a female Maybe voice. Reading that out loud, what? It sure seems so. Oops. Right? I mean. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait, are you actually talking back to me? I stand corrected. You seem to have a firm grip on the situation. You just read an incantation and then wished out loud that I could talk back. So. Mm. This is wrong. This can't be happening. This is wrong. Should I read it out loud? Wait, sorry. I wasn't considering your point of view here. Do you want to be a... Talking cat? Please don't take this the wrong way, but that's a resounding and definitive no. I just don't want your kind <laughs> of problems, man. My deal is sleeping, eating, and generally being decorative. I can get behind that. <laughs> like all cats. Okay. The voice acting feels I'm I'm I feel mean for saying this. It feels very amateurish. Like the line deliveries aren't given any kind of purpose. You know, they're they're not being delivered the right way. Like if you've got a, a cat who is acting supremely knowledgeable about obvious facts, they shouldn't just be saying it casually, they should be saying it matter of factly to drive home the point that you clearly have no idea what's going on, but me the talking cat does. That's the funny thing, not the fact that it's saying it. I wish Kitty would go back to normal. Did it work? <coughs> Darn it, can't even meow right anymore. I think it's safe to say it hasn't. Uh, by the way, Kitty, nice to meet you. We've known each other for years, dude. <laughs> that was a good delivery. We need to find a way to reverse this, so get to thinking. That took a weird turn. This is very odd. I feel like I'm being very critical of this. I don't really know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting something that felt more polished. Oh look, I can throw the cat at things. Never pay more than 20 bucks for a computer game. Yeah. Okay, um... 
sure, yeah, I guess that, that does answer literally the thing I was just saying, you creepy psychic cat. That's Ron Dilbert. He's really grumpy. What the fuck? I'd say she looks cute, but she's within earshot. Stop. What? That has weird connotations. It's an embarrassing baby picture. Move on. <laughs> that was a good line. My tablet. It's been charging for two days now. I reckon when you're in something like this that's, that's going for a slightly self-aware look at things, there are sort of two ways to go about it. There's the Discworld way. The, I'm referring to the Discworld point-and-click adventure games, which this is reminding me a lot of in various ways. But the, in that, there's Rincewind, but there's also a narrator, and they're both talking to you in a very fourth-wall-breaking way. But then you get something like Hive Swap, which is another retro-style point-and-click adventure. And in that the character talks to themselves a lot because they're on their own a lot, and it makes sense for them to basically entertain themselves by just narrating themselves. Whereas in this, it seems to be taking a sort of 50-50, they're sort of talking to you, sort of talking to each other, and I don't think it works as well. There's just something slightly off about it. It's our oven. I'm deathly afraid of it. Long story. <laughs> Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear wow. leads to anger. Anger. Open the damn oven, Kerwin. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Why am I making such a big thing of open the oven? Then? Why? What? Lemma's key. Oh, and there's a cookie in here. A suspicious one. If you're afraid to open an oven, don't eat any cookies you find inside. What? The f I no? think I'll take it, you know, for sustenance. What? Ugh, I would not recommend you eat that. Wow. Cat collaborator. Gonna grab this for a while. Yep. Can I use the, the cookie on the Necronomicon? Cookie's suspicious enough already. Hmm. Can I use the cookie on the cat? She's a carnivore. And uh. smart enough not to touch lemon's cooking. Frankly, with the way that cookie looks, I would say there, that that is at least 5% meat. Daughter Lemon's room? Beyond this impenetrable portal adorned with god-awful decorations lies Lemon's Shangri-La. Uh... He's such a hippie, it hurts. Me, mostly. I can squeeze under doors. Lemon knows that. He made this door particularly unsqueezable under, remember? What? It's a door. Lemus locked the door when he left for that esoteric retreat, and of course he has no phone signal or internet. Great. Kitty, I'm a little stumped here. I have no idea what to do next. We're clearly in over our heads. Maybe we should reach out to someone who knows more about this black magic thing. How about my roommate, Lemon? I've seen him write down names in this little notebook. Maybe we should look for it. Maybe I use Lemon's key. Either that... Or I, ah, I throw the Necronomicon at the door. Open door of lemon. The Necronomicon come. Oh, never mind. It might have worked if you committed. God. There we are. I think the cat could stand to be cuter. I think it's the fact that it's got giant eyebrow whiskers. Cats aren't usually depicted with eyebrow whiskers, and it just makes the cat look like an old man, which is why I assumed it would be male. I have a feeling somewhere inside this horribly over-decorated piece of furniture lies what we're looking for. <sighs> Let's not make a habit of this. So that's showing how yeah, you can use the cat. Thing is giving me dizzy spells. Oh, here it is. I haven't done that since I was a kitten. Still got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Gaudy. Hey, looks like there's something under this. Oh, I better lift it up then. What do you know? A pair of scissors. And a giant creepy face over the bed. It's a book Lemon left open. Page on the right says, Invisible ink. Use lemon juice to write secret messages on paper. Only you will be able to then read them by bringing the paper close to a source of heat. No, right. make that a source of mild heat, not open flame. Hmm. Well, this is blindingly obvious what I have to do. I use the incense stick. I light the incense stick and then hey. put the book, which 
Oh no, I cannot read. What a shocker. I guess I put it over this incense. Let's moderately heat this baby. Yes, it worked. Oh, lemon, one too many cheesy detective novels. All right, kitty. Now let's see this list here. I can't believe that's the cat's name. I think I got it. How's VG for all your supernatural needs sound? And there's the address. We're practically neighbors. This detective that was looking for the Necronomicon, Don, got kidnapped right in front of me. All right, you've mentioned it. Let's go. <laughs> but we've got to try and rescue him. All right. Do you know who kidnapped him? Uh, I guess we have no lead yet. Lead. Sam Spade over here. You know how I you humans always means. stereotype us as being selfish? Uh, sorry about that. Don't be, because in my case, that's exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I could give a kitten's fluffy tail about your detective friend. My main worry right now is my own predicament. Why didn't you call the police or something? Just looks like oh, it's constantly it's licking its lips. Let's roll, Marlo. I've just noticed that the carpet goes directly under their oven, and I'm fairly sure that's a fire hazard. No. See, without the whiskers, it looks a lot cuter. With the whiskers, it looks like an old man. Any cool battle cry like words before we embark on it? Time for Bossa Nova! Let's get on with it. <laughs> what? Was that funny? I'm not sure I got the joke. I think I'm going to be leaving it there. I. Mm, I don't know what I think of this. I was hoping for something that was going to be somewhere between the Discworld games and the Miskatonic. And it is but it's also veering uh, quite a way off into a third direction, which is, mm, I don't want to say amateurish game, but yeah. I'm interested in playing more of this because I want to know if it fixes the problems I have or at least, you know, drowns them out. The fact that two of the characters have stupid names, those being Don Archetype and Kitty, ugh, it just doesn't doesn't bode well for creativity when two of your three main characters have stupid names. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more Give Us a Cthulhu Adventure, let me know. I will probably be playing some more at some point. So a reminder that if you want to have your say on future first impressions, please consider pledging to my Patreon linked in the description and leave any suggestions for other games I could impression in the comments. Thank you very much and I will catch you later.